health check-in podcast a podcast that wants you to heal through mental health awareness because the more we learn the more we heal and today we're going to be learning from zen ashe zen ashe is so many things poet a writer an author an activist an event promoter even a podcaster she wears many different hats and for this episode she was kind enough to wear the mental health check-in hat just to share her journey with us as well as just share some useful tips as far as what to do when you feel like you're cracking under pressure how to get through tough times when you feel hopeless and other things of that nature i feel like a lot of people can learn a lot from this episode so I'm going to transition from that conversation really quickly. But first, I just want to make sure that you know where to find her in case you listen to this and decide you want to see and hear more of Zenashe. Zenashe can be found on Instagram at Zenashe Poetry, Twitter at Ashe Poetry. She's on YouTube and Facebook. And her podcast, Zenergy, that's Z E N N U R G Y, can be found on all podcasting platforms much like this podcast the mental health check-in podcast which you can find on youtube spotify apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, anchor breaker upliftunited.com and anywhere else you get your podcast from you can also follow us on twitter at chicken pod and instagram at chicken podcast and last but not least but most importantly if you find yourself or a loved one in a deep deep state of depression that's a simple podcast episode or even therapy or anything can pull you out of and you think that you or someone you know may be at risk then please refer to the description where you can find some hotline numbers to speak to someone but for now with all that said let's just dive right into this how you feeling emotionally physically just how you feeling in general i'm feeling great (laughs) (laughs) i'm glad to hear that and um you do a lot of things you do poetry you do comedy you do a podcast now the main thing i want to talk about is the fact you have a new book coming out or is the book out already i have a goal setting package that i put out which includes a 20 page workbook so that is the book portion of it i guess you would say i have a book that's already released it's on amazon called attracting abundance through revamping your mindset. And that's again, a mini book. It's about a 20 page book too. So I've been working on kind of mini books. People are busy. They want something they can, you know, read, digest or something they can come back to in in increments, which is what the workbook is. And so um, I haven't done a longer book yet that I've published yet. I'm working on one, but everything I've published so far has been kind of a a miniature version. Okay, cool. Uh, Well, since you brought up, First, I want to ask, what does revamping your mindset mean to you and how did you revamp your mindset? I actually wrote that book during COVID, of course. Uh, So it's a recent book that I published last year. Um, I'm an artist. I'm a poet. I do live shows. So when when COVID happened, uh, my last show was the Ides of March, March 15th, which is Anybody knows Julius Caesar, he got killed on the Ides of March. He was, you know, warned to beware the Ides of March. So that was actually my last live show. And then everything shut down. And normally the spring and summer is my busiest period. I get booked a lot. I have a lot of shows. And so it was very overwhelming, probably for every business owner in America, in the world to realize that everything that they had planned was now on hiatus. Um, Most people were not in the e-commerce, you know, sector, 
you know, as much as they are now. And so there was a lot of revamping. So when I say revamping my mindset, I had to go into a, how do I cope with this new reality? How do I rebrand myself as an artist, as a person? How do I get out of the fear, the sense of overwhelm, the sense of disruption and get back to first off knowing who I am and that at my core, I haven't changed. Yes, the entire world has changed, but I haven't changed. And kind of grounding myself back into that and then realizing that I still had a lot of opportunities. I just had to change the way I was doing things. So to me, revamping is changing, adjusting, resetting, you know, and so that's what that's what I had to do. And that was what the book was about. And that's what the workbook is about. Can you tell me about, a little bit about the contents of this workbook? Like how if I wanted to revamp my life, so to speak, what am I going to find in this book and how is it going to help me revamp my life? Well, the first book is just about one topic, which is abundance. The workbook, I'll actually kind of show it to you. This is my copy. OK, so when you get the package this is what the package looks like so you're getting a whole package for fifteen dollars you get like a motivational uh wristband you get tabs you get a journal you get stickers you get a bookmark and then you get the workbook and each page of the workbook is a different concept so the first page is abundance so this is actually mine um, and it has questions on it, journal questions. That's what the journal's for. It has a place to put like a song that makes you think of abundance, a movie, a book. Um, it has a place to put an affirmation. You know, like I put, um, I have access to everything I need. You know, um, I am abundantly supplied. So those were two of the affirmations that I wrote down. It has a place to put a goal. So like the goal that I wrote down was selling a hundred of these packets and you put a date there and then it has a place for you to put a person that's an ancestor, someone who's already passed on that you think you could learn from in this area that inspires you in this area and a person that's a contemporary. So I put Langston Hughes. He's the first black author poet who actually made a living from writing. And of course he left behind an abundant legacy of essays and plays and poems and short stories um, and of course oprah winfrey is the contemporary i put down of course she's you know one of the first black billionaires and she gave away so many things and she not only lifted herself but she lifted and made positions for ianla and dr phil and uh other people you know who came along and so at the very bottom i put a picture of the world and there's arrows all around the world and this kind of like different ways I felt I can make an impact different ways that I felt you know I could have streams of income things like that and so so it has a place for pictures in there but if you get the workbook you're going to get 16 different pages this is the second page access and I put my Angelou as my ancestor and I put Queen Afua uh, who's does like holistic things like holistic eating and you know herbs and you know, going natural, you know, she inspired me to go natural. I have a picture of myself going natural down there. And again, it's got things. So this is what a page looks like. It's not completed. So it's got space for you to write and put pictures and things like that. So it's 16 different topics. These are all A's. So I'm actually going to be giving, creating one for every letter of the alphabet. Um, and so I, I felt like when I went through this COVID revamping, that I needed to go back to the basics. And I literally started with the ABCs and I started writing down words like adapt, abundance, attitude, access. And then I started thinking about what have I learned that I can actually use to, um, to move forward, to kind of cope with what's going on, to inspire myself. So I just started taking a lot of notes in those areas, asking myself questions in those areas, kind of just really trying to refocus on everything that um, I felt like I needed to refocus on and just really get back to the core of who I was and what I wanted. And so that's that's what the workbook is about. You said a lot there that I really want to touch on, but first I want to just backtrack a little bit to your affirmation that you said. You said, I have everything I need. I'm sorry, I'm paraphrasing there. My 
memory's bad trying to remember exactly. But yeah, with that affirmation, I just think that's really interesting as we come out of a year with so much loss. I want to know how you came to the point where you decide that everything you have, everything you need, you already have. Well, you know, like I said, I did a lot of thinking last year and I thought about books, movies, TV shows. I thought about The Wizard of Oz, all right? In The Wizard of Oz, the whole concept of the story is that uh, Dorothy is unhappy. She, you know, falls asleep and she goes to Oz. And everybody in Oz that she meets feels like they are missing something. You know, um, the, the scarecrow doesn't have brains. You know, the tin man doesn't have a heart. And the cowardly lion has no courage. But when they're journeying, they realize they actually had it all inside of them. They just had not tapped into it. So um, when I look around and I look back, I think looking back is really good if you reflect correctly, because as much as we're going through things now, pretty much everybody's probably been through hard times before. You got through it then. So how did you get through it? You had something in you that helped you get through it. Um, you had people around you possibly that helped you get through it. You know, so as I was looking at COVID, yes, it's unprecedented, but it is a challenge. And just like any other challenge, it can be met with the same things that helped us succeed before. And so that's kind of what I was focusing on is that I can't change the world around me. All I can do is dip within to what I have and remind myself of what I have and tap into the support system that I have because those things haven't changed as much as the world has changed. And if I go back and I refocus, and even if I go back to certain memories and remember, well, how did I get through, you know, when I got divorced and I was a single parent, how did I get through the death of my father, my mother? How did I get through, you know, different illnesses that I saw people go through? How did I get through that? I got through that by doing X, Y, and Z, you know? so. That's how I kind of came to the concept of I have everything I need because I've already gone through so many things and I've already learned from those things how to tap into certain, you know, qualities or certain support systems or whatever it is. Reading books, I went back to a lot of books that I read before that were helpful in the past, you know, so that's that's where I got that idea from. I have access to everything I need and I have everything that I need I just have to utilize it I really love the sound of that and I think it's really poignant and I agree with a lot of it but I guess in to play devil's advocate I suppose I understand that a lot of people struggle with that kind of mindset like they struggle to look back in the past and they struggle to for lack of a better term and at risk of potentially sounding intensive a lot of people crack under pressure and with 2020 being such a traumatic year, they may struggle with trying to look inward and looking back on their past. So for, pe for people who fit that boat, do you have any advice you can say to them directly? I think that everyone has felt like they could crack under pressure and everyone has felt like that song, don't push me because I'm close to the edge. I'm trying not to lose my head. You know, that song, I think everybody has felt like that. Um, but even the people that crack under pressure, I mean, there are times when we all lose it. There are times when we all curse somebody out or throw something against the wall or cry for half a day or whatever. But when you have done that, then you still got to keep living. You know, you still have to move on. You still have to, to move forward. And so I believe that if a person is still here, they haven't given up. If you're still breathing air, you haven't given up. You may be disgusted, you may be demoralized, you may be depressed, but you haven't given up. And if you haven't given up, then that means you can get up. And I think it just takes one step. You, you start with one step, whether it's I'm gonna go to YouTube and I'm gonna play an affirmation and I'm gonna do it every day, even if I don't believe it. You know, it can't hurt me. You start with one step. You know, you you say, I'm going to get out of this bed and I'm going to walk around the neighborhood because the exercise would do me good. 
And I think that if people say, okay, I can start with one step, something small, something that's not, doesn't take any money, doesn't take any, takes a little bit of effort, but not much. I'm going to start somewhere. I'm going to smile just for five minutes. I'm going to write down three things I'm grateful for, even though a lot of bad has happened. So I think that there are, you know, in, in the workbook, I put a lot of things like that. You know, every page basically has, you know, listen to, you know, read a book that's a rags to riches story or read a book on finances or listen to a, a song that really motivates you or whatever. It has little action steps because what I believe that people don't do sometimes is they don't do the small things that actually make a big difference. Getting up and taking a walk is a small thing, but it can make you feel completely different. You know, smiling is a small thing, but it can actually change your mood set, your, your mindset and your mood. You know, writing down three things that you're grateful for. A whole woman, there's a woman, well, I think her name was Sarah Von Bronick or something like that. She was on the Oprah show years ago. She wrote a whole gratitude journal. That's all she sold was just a little gratitude journal. You wrote every day three things that you were grateful for. And there were people that said that that by itself changed their lives, that they would wake up and they would be like looking for things to be grateful for. And they found themselves noticing all these things that they were not paying attention to, that they had, but they weren't, they weren't appreciative of. And then when they became appreciative of it, then they actually started attracting more of those things to them, you know? And so this woman made a whole career out of telling people to, uh, to find three things to be grateful for each day, you know? So that's what I would say to that person, do something positive, something small, something that just moves you forward. Because if you can take that little step and you can continue to put a lot of little steps together, you can get to where you want to be. You know, a journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. So just take a first step. Again, I really love the sound of that. And again, I 100% agree with you there. And with you saying all that, I kind of want to backtrack some more because you did talk about how you had to adapt and reset, especially in last year, just with uh, changing your surroundings, basically. But like, I kind of want to ask directly, and I guess I kind of did ask when I asked, like, at the beginning, how are you feeling emotionally and physically? But just directly asking, how has your mental health been over the last year? Well, I think it's gone up and down. I mean, there were times when, um, when, when, when COVID first happened, probably the first two weeks or so, I felt very stuck. I felt confused. I felt overwhelmed. I felt a little frightened. I felt nervous and worried um, about a lot of things. And um, I just had to sit with that for a little while. Okay, I'm gonna sit with this, I'm gonna feel it. I'm going to acknowledge that all of this is happening. I'm gonna take it in. All right, okay, I'm taking it in. I'm breathing, okay, all right. And then, then it was, okay, well, we can't stay in this mode forever. What are you gonna do now? And that was when I started to meditate. I started to, you know, just think, daydream, visualize, just started to try to do all of that. And that's when, you know, I came up with the plan. Like I said, the whole ABCs. And, and originally when I came up with that plan, it was for me. It wasn't even for anybody else. I wasn't even thinking about anybody else. I was just thinking about how am I going to adapt? And then when I started really diving into it over a period of a couple of months, I was like, Hmm. Okay. And then initially it was, I started a podcast and again, I wasn't even thinking about anything more than just talking about this, just talking about every week was a different concept. We were going to explore it. I was going to bring people on. They were going to talk about their journey. How did this concept help them? Uh, I was bringing on, you know, artists, entrepreneurs, all that. And then I was like, you know what, this is great to talk about it, but there needs to be more than talk to this. I need to start putting something together where people can actually begin to really embrace these concepts and bring them to life 
inside of their own lives. And so that's, so we're talking about um, from March being stuck for two weeks to a month of doing nothing but just coping. And then maybe the end of April, beginning to sit down and do a lot of writing and journaling and meditating. And then we're talking about maybe in August, actually starting the podcast. And then in October, launching it, because I spent time actually researching what I wanted to do and all of that, kind of finding more out about podcasting. And so I didn't even launch till October. So this has been, for me, what some people might say a long process, other people might say that's very short, you know, so I guess time is relative, but that's kind of the process that I went through with my mental health and with figuring out where I was going to go. And everything is unfolding. I feel like life unfolds. You take one step, it leads to another step, it leads to another step, it leads to another step. And that's why I believe in taking the first step. Just take the first step because you don't know where it's going to lead to unless you just take the first step. And like it's interesting when you say the first step too, like it goes back to you talking about the ABCs. Like you, we really had to like go back to just relearning things, like relearning things as if we were a child, like literally taking our first steps. And I think it's interesting, like it's not a lot of people do that. Like we always say, look inward, but like how inward are we supposed to look? How backwards are we supposed to look? And from what you've been talking about, it seems like it helps to kind of basically treat life as if you were a child learning things for the first time like all over again like we change as humans every day anyway so why not just relearn those things we learn the basics kind of like that's that's what you're getting at right yeah i i feel that well children are resilient and children they don't see obstacles as much you know they when a child decides they're going to do something they have no doubt that they're going to get it done it just they, i'm going to do this I'm going to be an astronaut. I'm going to be a basketball player. I'm going to be a famous star. You know, they say it and they have no doubt it's going to happen. So they have this complete faith and we lose a lot of that, you know, um, as we get older and we have different things happen to us. Some people might call that naivety, but I call it faith. When I was thinking, like I said, when I was stuck for that couple of that month or so, a couple of weeks, I was just like, okay, go back to a time when you didn't feel stuck. You know, go back to a time when you felt like you had capabilities and you had potential and you had possibilities. Go back to that time in your head. And so that's kind of where I where I went. So for me, um, I went back to thinking about college. I went back to thinking about high school. I went back to, to, to being a kid. You know, I went back to in my mind to different things and, and just began to feel that again, like you know, feeling that I could do anything, that I could be anything, that I could go anywhere, even though COVID's telling you, no, you can't do anything. You know, I, I was like, but I can, I, I just have to figure out a way to do it, you know? And so, um, so yeah, I, I think um, that reflection, and again, everybody's got to do their own thing. And, and for me, just sometimes you have to be quiet You know, you have to be quiet and you have to just ask. I like to go to bed sometimes with a question. I get into bed and I say, I don't know what to do. Subconscious, give me a, give me a sign. Give me a, give me something. Let me wake up with something, you know, and then, um, you know, what should I do in this situation? What is the first thing I should do in this situation? And then just go to bed and then wake up. And nine times out of 10, when I wake up, I wake up with an idea when I go to bed with a question. I wake up with an idea. And then I start to write about that idea. And then as I start to write about that idea, I start to get more clarity on the idea. You know, so I would suggest to people who don't know where to start, go to bed with a question, ask your subconscious, what should I do? And go to sleep. Because you have a lot of inner wisdom. We just don't always listen to it. You know, I mean, you might have a dream that gives you a lot of guidance. You know, there's a lot of people whose businesses came to them in a dream. To backtrack a little bit to what you're saying about children being resilient and going back to kind of relearning your own steps, it ties back to really everything you do as far as like 
poetry, comedy, the podcast, because from what I've seen, you do a lot of what you do has to deal with growth. And first off with what you're talking about now, like that deals with a lot of kind of like growing up all over again, like taking the steps you took as a child, but through an adult lens. And I think that's really cool. Well, I think that's really cool. And I thank you for sharing your story with me and thank you for coming on this podcast. But before we get out of here, I just want to ask, like, is there anything that we haven't touched on that you really want to let people chew on as they get out of here? Like as far as advice, lasting words, anything like that? Well, um, I do want people to chew on the fact that um, you can build your life. You know, a lot of people think that they have given, been given a life and they have to live it. No, you can change your life at any moment, no matter how old you are, no matter what gender you are, no matter what your sexual orientation, your religion, doesn't matter. You can build your life. You have to choose the life you want and then work toward creating that life. And that deals with your mindset, that deals with the attitudes and the the things that you're projecting out into the world because that's going to bring you stuff back. And it also deals with your daily habits. And the more that you can create habits that uh, are affirming of your final vision, the closer and the, the, the faster you're going to get there. So um, that's what my podcast is about, Zenergy, Z-E-N-N-U-R-G-Y. You can find it on pretty much all streaming platforms, Building the Life of Your Dreams. Um, that's what Zenergize Your Life, the workbook package is about. It's about building your life. It's a choice. You can either take what you were given and take what people told you and be in the rut and the habits that you have, especially if it's working for you. But a lot of us, it didn't work for. A lot of us, we need something better, different. So, so if you want something better, you want something different, it's about choice and, and revamping, as we've been talking about all this podcast, revamping keeping what works, getting rid of what doesn't. I 100% agree with that. And thank you for saying that. Thank you for coming on. But before we get out of here, there's one more thing I want to go over. Because every episode I like to end on just giving people their flowers, so to speak. Like if we never speak again, I want to let let people know why they're appreciated. And I appreciate you just for dedicating your life and your time to so many different ways to help people grow, help people cope. Like people learn differently. People learn through music. They learn through poetry. Some learn best through listening to a podcast. Some learn best through listening to a book. And individually, all that stuff is really hard to manifest, yet alone actually put action into. So the fact that you want to manifest and put action into all those different avenues at once, I just think that's really commendable i think you're really helping people through so many different ways and i think that's so again commendable and if you haven't already i'm sure that so many people have learned and healed through the different things you do and i thank you for offering your gifts to the world in so many different ways and i again i thank you for coming on this podcast thank you i appreciate that Thank you.